you know, I I I thought it was a bad idea to keep the border open. The one nurse refused to come in the room. She came to the glasses. She wanted me to take my vitals by myself. What What would you say to your Barbadian people? What message would you like to extend to them? I would say. You're in Canada. Yeah. And you are on social media. Yeah. <clears throat> you're a Barbadian and you yeah. see all the things that are happening in Barbados. Yeah. As a Bayesian living abroad, how do you feel about the news that you're seeing coming out of Barbados and how Barbadians are handling it, how government is handling it? And um, how does that Fine. I'm torn really because at first it looks like a very calculated, a very precision intellectual operation. And I like the idea of, I was complaining a lot online about them not, about them keeping the borders open because Barbados is very densely populated. We are very lime in culture, you know, always over at somebody house. You know, I I I thought it was a bad idea to keep the border open. But when they transition to everybody that comes to Barbados has to has to go into a, a, a place for 14 days, like mandatory quarantine, that seems like a, 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 a measured middle ground that made sense to me because that would deter people that come into Barbados for shits and giggles because you, you, you're giving up 14 days of, of vacation or whatever it is that you're coming to Barbados to do to, 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 to finally get into Barbados. And that made, that made sense to me. Um, all the accounts that I've read of people that are in the, the isolation places in Barbados seem to be that they're being well taken care of. So it, it, the, 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 the people are, are protecting themselves. The people that are taking care of them, protecting themselves properly. And as an overall... Um, good experience and the only thing I got a problem with is the, the the full the full shutdown the full shutdown I felt was not handled properly from and the blame can't be a completely on the government side it gotta be it got they just gotta take they just gotta take responsibility for this too but the government I say government gotta take 70 percent of responsibility you can't tell people, okay, we should know everything, including the supermarkets, in 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 less than forty eight hours, and expect them not to rush the supermarket. And you can't expect the supermarkets to be able to 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 dealing with the COVID and the social distancing and all that stuff, stocking up, getting the stock and stuff, and we put cold control at the same time. So the crowds that I see in online. The people that close so close together and stuff like that, like, like, and 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 Barbados is a community that got everybody know Barbados got a high case of comorbidities, and that is what COVID preys on. Those are the people that COVID preys on. And the the shutdown is only two weeks, so if all these people, if all these people talk to each other, and so close to each other, breathing out each other, the day before the lockdown. All is a potential that a good, a good share of them but might not even have symptoms the, the day before the lockdown ends. So then when the lockdown ends, you're just going out and, and it, it just seems like, it seems like it's a, a, a domino effect, right? It's unfair, but the government is going to be judged on the overall result. And they're doing so many things good, but then you get a little, you do some, you do one thing wrong, you can be judged on that. I asked the question on social media to people if they had the opportunity to talk to somebody who has been diagnosed with um, COVID-19, what would they want to ask? And so there are some questions, some questions we've already touched on, so I wouldn't repeat those questions, but there's some here okay. interesting. So, so Amanda L, she says, 
who has surprised you the most with their reaction to your diagnosis? Has it been positive or negative? Not really. Not, nobody has, has, has surprised me, really. I would say most of mostly the time people have been mainly concerned, a mixture of shocked, like they can't believe it. You know, it's like surreal that that there's, I think Hamilton is up to a hundred and something cases now. I'm, I, I was number 54. So mm -hmm. it's just surreal that, you know, there's five, at that point it was how many thousand people in the country that had it and I was one of them. So I don't think, I don't think anybody has shocked me with a bad reaction. If I would say, if, I, if I could say somebody that, that that shocked me in their treatment of me when I have COVID, I would say when I went to the hospital, I had to go to the hospital when my 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 lungs were really bad um, this week actually, and like I didn't go in in the ambulance or anything. I drove myself there because I didn't want to. I called them in advance. Like the the public, I have a public health nurse that calls me every day, checks in see how my symptoms are doing, stuff like that. She told me that if I ever would be, I need to go to the emergency room, call them first so they're ready. So I called them and the lady said on the phone, well, you, all right, just come in. Like she didn't, she wasn't bothered. I was like, okay, cool. I went in. The people that checked me in and stuff were very, you know, they were very like, oh, okay. And the security guard put his mask on right away and stuff, right? They were very rattled at the front. But I find that when I went into the ER, like a lot of the health providers were very rude about it. Um, I found that I heard a doctor talking. She said, oh, this guy here is COVID positive. He's here because he's having lots of chest pains. He can't breathe, whatever. He's like, no, she, at first she said he's COVID positive. And he's like, what is he doing here? And I'm like, like I'm behind a screen, but like I am, I am like no more than four feet away. And then she told him about breathing problems. And, and chest pain, he said, oh, okay. Well, I guess that's the only valid reason for a COVID patient to be in there. So then they put me in a clean room and the one nurse refused to come in the room. She came to the glass and she wanted me to take my vitals by myself, but I can't put on a blood pressure thing by myself with one hand. And I looked around to say, oh, I can't get this done. She was gone already, right? So when she came, I, I sat down in the chair when she came back, she was talking to another nurse saying that she doesn't want to go in and all that stuff. And I understand that as a healthcare provider, it doesn't mean that you're fearless and you 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 have the same concerns as everybody else about getting um, COVID nineteen or whatever. But you gotta realize two things. One, I am already in there in the situation that you don't want to be in. So you're scared of getting it. I already have it and I am having difficulty breathing. So I am scared. You, 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 what you're scared of, I am, I'm, I'm at the other end of the road of, of what you're scared of. So you should, be, you, should be, you should be trying to help me. You're the only person that can help me. The second thing you got to remember is if, you, if that's how you're going to behave, the hospitals are huge. You can have that conversation out of my earshot. Just be respectful. And and, and finally, a, a nurse came in, a, a Muslim nurse in a hijab, and she had a face mask and all this stuff. But it was like, I can't help but think, like, she, did she draw the short, the short straw? Did, were they, they're playing rock, paper, COVID, and sent and set her, and set, and set, and set her in? Because it's just, it's just... I, I I had to I had to hear the conversation and all this stuff. She's, she and she she's assisting this nurse, but she's not coming inside. He said blatantly she's not coming inside. Whatever, whatever. So that that's the most surprising reaction that I had because she was head to toe head to toe in PPE, full face goggles underneath a face mask, another mask underneath the face shield thing. She's all PPE up, like she has my information. She knows I'm on. I was on day 17 or or whatever it is there. I'm probably not super contagious. I, I I came in a mask. I came in a mask from home that I brought. Like, even if you believe that, just don't, just don't, just don't let me hear. Like, it's just, it's just, it's not. If it was a different person, I would have panicked. If it was a different person, I would have been angry. 
I just think that it, it, it is a balance. You got you you scared, but don't let the patient know that you don't want to come in and all this stuff. It's it's, it's just a it's just it's it's just a balance really. And I I the doctor that came in afterwards after I got my chest X-ray and I got my uh, ECT and I got my all that stuff. The doctor that came in afterwards, he had on his PPE and he's the only person that came in the room casually. He just opened the door and came in. Blah blah blah. Um, sir, this is what's wrong with your chest and your lungs right now, and blah, 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 And he says, you know, the best thing for you to do is I can give you some stronger painkillers, and you just got to write this out, and blah, 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 blah. But he didn't, he came right up to me. He talked to me like a human being. And when I was leaving, I said, oh, your coworkers seem to be freaking out down here. I, cause I need to leave now. Can you tell me which way to leave? So I don't pass as much people as possible and I don't, I don't create like a panic. He's like, that is a very good question. But then he went outside and he came back. He said, no, I'll lead you. He lead me to some corridors up to the outside. And I was like, hmm. but like, there's a balance. There gotta be a balance because you can't be, you can't be stigmatizing people for something that they, they had no control over. So Lana J asks, do you think your life view has changed since being diagnosed? Um, I don't think my life view has changed. I just think, what, what not on a, on a grand scale, I think dramatic. I just think that I've found that, like, I've been in contact with people that I didn't know still cared about me if that makes sense huh or people that you got a good connection with that you know fall by the wayside or whatnot there's a lot of people that that check in all the time and talk to you all the time and make an effort to like make a it, it, it changed it changed my point of view about the resilience of connections maybe but other than that i mean I will, obviously, uh, when I was when I can breathe and stuff, week one, week two, I was contemplating my mortality. But and you know, the couple of nights I was because the sleep schedule was all screwed up because you you don't have um any energy so you don't sleep. And a couple of nights I you know cry a couple of times and stuff, but I don't think it changed my worldview. I mean, obviously. I want to get home to see my people. I obviously, like, when I feel comfortable, I'll be hugging them a little bit tighter. But I don't think on a grand scale my worldview has changed. I just think that people need to... My worldview hasn't changed, but the world has changed. So people need to adjust accordingly. Like, I just think that people just need to not... Like, we need to take a step back and evaluate like was really important like other people talking about the economy is going to crash is a recession yeah 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 and it's going to get worse because of the recession but like dead dead people can't rebuild us rebuild the economy right if we let this thing go rampant don't lock down don't do that because we think that a certain um demographic is invulnerable uh Nobody's gonna be effective when their parents are dying, or when, or when family members are dying, mentors are dying. Organizations are not gonna be effective when board members are dying, CEOs are dying. These are people that skew older, people that skew, skew to 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 you know uh, comorbidities and stuff like that. Like, there's a human value that you have to factor in up beyond the money and the stocks and bonds and the percentages and all that stuff. There's a human value beyond the sentimental value of, of, of life and like connections and emotional value. There's a human value that has to be factored in there. You got to add that to their math equation. Because nobody's going to be effective in a workplace when people are dying and dead around them. And it's like mass graves and, and people putting storm bodies on ice rinks. Nobody's going to be in a mind space to, keep an economy going. So like keeping keeping everything running and letting the virus burn through us to, to develop an immunity to save the economy doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. 
So I just think we need to sit back and, and, and think about things, think about maybe like think about capitalism and whole, think about how we treat the, the poor people, poorer people in society, how we treat those people. Like, and just like, stop being so judgmental. Like I see people posting about the people that are stuck on a cruise ship and saying, oh, that, that serves them right. Serving them right. Why you would go on a cruise ship during a pandemic? The official start of the pandemic, I think, was what? March 14th, like three days after Tom Hanks got it. It was a, it was a pandemic. Mm-hmm. These people were on this cruise on March 6th. It, none of you, I'm pretty sure none of you bought, none of these people commenting saying, serves you right, did not buy no toilet paper on March 6th. They didn't buy no Lysol on March 6th. They didn't buy no masks on March 6th. They didn't buy no gloves on March 6th. But if you think these people had the foresight to know that there's going to be a global pandemic to not go on a cruise ship on March 6th, but you didn't have the foresight to go and buy these things before they were out of supply, then you're just a hypocrite. I think you need to show some compassion to these people who are stuck on a cruise ship. What What would you say to your Barbadian people? What message would you like to extend to them? I would say just to take it seriously. Like, as I said before, like, don't think it's just a cold or a flu. Like, I get the flu a lot. I had dengue fever before, both types. And there's nothing that compares to what I went through with COVID-19. And there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's the aspect too of you transmitting it to other people and stuff like that. So you, you just, the, the best way to deal with COVID is just not to get it. Like, I mean, I'm happy that I'm on the mend and I'm going to have some sort of antibodies as the, as the tunnel, but you don't know, you don't know which trajectory you're going to take. So you can't risk it. Like if I had a choice, I would not choose to have had it, obviously. So I would say take it seriously. Stop talking for this while you had it last, last, last fall or whatever, because if you had it last fall, you would have given it to your doctor. You would have given it to everybody in your house. Like the infectiousness of this thing is through the charts. So there's no way that you had it and treated it like a normal flu and went to work and stuff and you didn't cause a pandemic. Like and you didn't kill people. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make any logical sense. And like, I just, I, I just want people to take it seriously. Like, don't say it's the 5G towers. Don't say that you don't got no proof that people are actually dying from it and stuff like that. Like, the hospital I was in the other day, they were ignoring me. There's five people on ventilators in the hospital. Phone. Don't believe that you've not seen any bodies, so it's just a hope. Just, 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 just take it easy. And the longer... The longer you don't take it seriously, the longer we got to be on lockdowns and that sort of stuff because then it's just going to spread. You can spread it exponentially. You can give the flu to three people. You can give COVID to like 59,000 people just by going outside for a whole day and not, and not social distance. So like my advice to people that don't have it is not to get it. Stay at home as long as possible and 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 just, just just try your best not to get it. Like, thank you very very much. No problem. What are you drinking? What's that? Cold cold turmeric tea. Cold turmeric tea. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. they have, I have turmeric tea here. They have them in the tea bags. You know, you have the one that's really. Like- this is like this is like. Safe